Okay, we stopped at this point where we're two dimension styles and we're going to create a new one. And if you look in your assignment, it has this table with all your settings. So I'm going to select on standard and I'm going to create a new one from copying the standard style. So I want standard to be highlighted, you guys, not annotated. Annotative makes the dimensions change with scale. And we want to go to the standard style. And when I click new, it's going to copy all those. You see, it says copy of standard. And I'm going to call this ASME Y14.5 small. And I'm going to create a small style first. We'll have a small and large style. And with that radius coming from the inside out, that is a large style. So we're going to set this up to small and we're going to look at that page in our book that has a small and large style on the fit tab. So I'm going to continue this and it brings us into this. So I'm going to just make this large. Well, let's just stay right here because I need my settings. So one thing that I like to tell people is, I don't know if you guys do this, but I like to look at magazines from the back to the front. I don't know why. I don't read books that way. But alternate units we will never change. And what are alternate units? I could have inches and in square brackets, I could also have millimeters. We're not going to have that. See, this is not clicked to display. Do not click this. Also, we don't want all of our dimensions to have a certain way of tolerances in the dimensions themselves. So we're, I like to start from the right, go back to the left on primary units. If you don't set your primary units first, the rest of it isn't going to make sense. Like it could be in feet and inches and you're trying to put in these decimal increments and it doesn't make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on our primary units and that's on the bottom over here and I'm going to just use my highlighter tool here's our primary units and decimal is the type of of units that we want and we're going to set our precision to the majority of the dimensions in our drawing and that's two places to the right so you can see that this picture actually emulates what you're doing so that you can see what you're doing, if it's right or wrong. Now, something that's very important for you to understand is that inches never have leading zeros. You see this radius with that's 0 0.80. Inches never have leading zeros. We always have trailing for our precision. So we're going to suppress. And if you look at the bottom down here, it says suppress zero suppression. We want to suppress leading zero. So click on that and you can see that radius of 0 0.80 changed to radius 0 0.80. And that's what we want. We're always going to have trailing. So do not suppress this. This is not what we want. It's what, we're, what we want to take away, which is kind of odd, but that's the way it is. Now, if you look over here to the right, it says angular dimensions. We also want to suppress a leading zero. If we have anything less than one degree, we want to suppress that too. Just knowing that inches never has leading zeros, we're going to suppress both. Now that we've got this done, I'm going to mark all this off. This is done. We're going to go to the fit tab and this says nothing about the fit tab. Now the fit tab is where we show large or small style dimensions. And this only applies to radial or diametric dimensions. So you see this radius right here is pointing from the outside in. It's giving us a preview of that. If I go to in, in this chapter five, it is a step-by-step -step and it has it's the fit tab page. And in my book, it's page 287. Now, once again, this is a 2020 book, and I apologize for that. But the Fit tab page is the one that you'll be setting this by. And in the top, it has, it shows the arrows coming from the outside. In the bottom, they're coming from the inside. So it says, either text or arrows, best fit. And then 
when Texas uh, is not the default position, put the text beside the dimension line, use an overall scale of one. And we're going to see that we might change that in millimeters. And we do not place text man manually or we don't check e either of these fine tuning boxes. All right. So that's already set up for the small style. And that's why we started on a small style. So we're going to go to the text tab next. And it says, oh, and that's over here. Notice that our text style is set to standard. And our, we should have already set our text to Arial. The text height will be 0.125. And that's the same size as we made our text for our notes. So our, all of our notes and our dimensions, everything will be 0.125 except the labels of views. If we have to label like a section view or something, that will be twice as large as that. So it's easier to remember. So I'm going to change this to 0.125. And now I'm done with this. There's nothing else that I need to do in this. And you can see that text alignment, when we get to um, our architectural style, will align the text with the dimension line. But we're always going to allow our, our dimensions to be horizontally aligned and sitting as if they were on the bottom of a piece of paper. Now I'm going to go to symbols and arrows. And the rule that we're going to remember about arrowhead sizes are they are the same size as our text. So that, once again, it's easier to remember. Now, something that I do that's different than the videos is if you look, we already have center marks and we already have center lines. The lines are the extensions. The mark is a little center plus. The lines are the extension lines beyond the plus. And we don't want either because we've already put our center marks in. So I'm just going to say none on this one. Now I want you to notice that that goes away. But every time you put a dimension in a, in a radius or a diameter, it's going to put another center mark over the top. And it's going to look different than what we've already put in. So I'm just going to punt right here and say that we're not going to put any in. We've already got our center marks. I don't want another center mark covering over my gaps with a different center mark style. So this is something that I do not do. I do not put line here. I set that to none. I'll leave everything else the same unless it tells you otherwise. If if this tell, doesn't tell you to do something, don't do don't change anything else, okay? We're going to go to lines now and this is going to tell us what our offsets, our gaps away from our geometry, wherever we click to put a dimension, we're going to make that 0 0.062, which is the furthest away. It's 0 0.032 to 0 0.062 away from wherever we click for a dimension. So this is a setup of giving us that gap automatically. The extension beyond the dimension lines Notice that's once again the same the same distance or the same length as our text height, our arrowhead size, and that kind of thing. The baseline spacing, if we wanted to use baseline text, should be 0.25. We're just going to leave everything as is unless it tells us to do anything different. So I'm going to say OK on this one. And now we have a small style. Now, if I want to copy that small style to a large style, I have to highlight it. And we're only going to change the fit tab. And we're going to go to that page on the step-by-step -step, uh, dimensions, uh, mechanical drawings in chapter five. In my book, it's on page 287. And it's the title of that whole page is fit tab. So I'm going to highlight this one and create a new one. And I'm going to leave it as me Y14.5 because this is a mechanical style. And I'm going to call this large. So why, do we, why are we doing this? We're doing this so that you learn to change dimension styles in dimensions. Because in civil, in different um, disciplines, you're going to have to change the dimension style. So we're going to follow this and go to the fit tab. That's the only thing that changes. Everything else is set because we copied the small style 
to the large one, everything copied over. Now, the difference in this is we're going to have only text in our fit options here. So it says, if there isn't enough room to place both text and arrowhead size, the first thing to move outside is text. Now, do you see the radius comes from the inside out now? That's what we want in a large style. And in a diameter, it's going to have the arrowheads all the way across, and the arrowhead will be on the inside. The other two things that we change are place text manually, so that it's not in the body of the part and draw the dimension lines between the extension lines, which would be like across the arrow, the arrows across a diameter. And I'm going to say, okay on that. So now I have two styles. And if I want to set small, you want to set small as your current style, because everything is a small style except one or two dimensions. And we'll change those at the end when we review our input sheet. So I'm going to say set current. And you see that has just a little highlight of a gray box behind it. And then I'm going to close. So if you look at the top of the sheet, it shows you your dimension styles. We have large and small. And our dimensions layer is our layer that's going to override the current layer. So every time I put a dimension in, it's going to be on the dimensions layer, which makes sense to me. All right. On our toolbar, we have horizontal dimensions and vertical dimensions, linear or horizontal or vertical. If I need the length of a line at an angle, that would be an aligned dimension and it aligns with the two points that you select. We have an arc length, that means the chord length of that arc, and it puts that arc length symbol in front of it. We have ordinate dimensions, which would set something as our zero, 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 and it would measure from that only. We have radial dimensions. We have jogged dimensions. And why would we have a jogged radius? If the center of that radius, or if that radius is so large that the center is off the border of the entire drawing, we need to set kind of a, a new center. And it would be kind of a just saying, you see that jog? That jog says that this isn't really the center, but we're trying to emulate that. We're trying to show that this is still a radius. So we're giving you a jog. The radius is not really here. I mean, the center is not really here. So it still puts a radius in. We have our diametric dimension, angular dimensions. So we click on two lines. When we're dimensioning a diameter, we select on the circle. When we're dimensioning a radius, we select on the arc. When we're dimensioning linear or aligned dimensions, we select on two points. Now this one I want you to be really careful of, this quick dimension. It's just going to put dimensions on something from any place that it thinks about. So anytime a software wants to automatically do something, it's not going to have design intent or the intention of the input sheet behind it. We have baseline, dimension, baseline dimensions. So we have to have a dimension to start from, and then it will continue dimensioning from that same point. We also have continuous dimensions, which we'll use in architecture from window to window to door to window. And that's really fast. This can set up the dimension space between things. This can break dimension lines from overlapping each other. And then we have GD&T tolerance. We can make a center mark on something, but we've already put our center marks in. We can make an inspection dimension that tells us, I want you to check this 50% of the entire lot. I want you to check these, every other one. And I can make a jog dimension. I used to have this, and you see that break in that visual there. I used to have 300 foot long cables at Boeing, and there was nothing in between the beginning and the end of that cable. So I would break it down so that I could use a larger scale 
to show the entire thing and I have to break the visual and then put the break in the dimension and override that dimension. Now dimensions are smart. They measure your part. So this is where we're going to get to check our geometry. Now these are, this line right here denotes that these are settings and this is dimension to edit. It rotates, modifies, restores dimension text. Now this only changes the text. And when we want to change text, we're just going to double click on it. This is dimension text edit. So it only moves and rotates the text. This is dimension update. So if you change something and the dimensions have not updated to the style, you can use a dimension update. And this is where you can also set your styles. So just like format, dimension style, this is another way to do that. If we go to the home tab, you're going to see that you have all your dimensions here. Now, this is that automatic dimension thing. Very, be very careful of using this. I don't use this at all because it never very rarely gives me what I want. If I hit this down key right here, it has the dimensions types that I need. And if you're used to uh, solid modeling software, sometimes you don't have to say what kind of dimension you want. It already knows it. But in AutoCAD, we have to say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to my bracket input sheet. And I'm going to go over here to my input. Now, how do I select what dimensions are going to be in what views? If you kind of look at the orientation, if I cannot touch something, if it's not red, I cannot dimension it. So what if I just went up here and I turned off my hidden layer? I can turn off this light bulb and it turns it off. Therefore, I cannot dimension anything to the, anything that's hidden, not even the center line of a hidden hole. That is a big no-no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some linear dimensions. If you see these, they look like they're facing toward the front. These dimensions, just the way they're oriented, might give you a tip as to where you're going to dimension those in what view. So if I'm looking at this primary view, I want this profile of this part. So I'm going to have some linear dimensions. And I click on the linear dimension button. Now, the thing that I want to think about is I want my smallest dimensions closest to my part. So I have six. Notice that that's not on the center layer. That's overriding to my dimensions layer. Now, if I want to move this inside, I can grab this with a grip on the text and drag it to the midpoint. And that will flip my arrowheads. So that gives me a little bit more room. I'm going to also dimension linear this one. And I can line that up by hovering over this dimension. And we want to align dimensions. Notice that they share an arrowhead. That really saves a lot of space. So we want to align dimensions if we can. I need a vertical dimension. So if I click on two spots, notice if I push it up, it's horizontal. If I push it to the left, it's a vertical dimension. Now, if I click on this and I maybe I can drag this text inside these two lines. And sometimes it just it thinks that there's not enough space. So we may have to go back and do that manually. Sometimes if I want to move this, I want to drag this dimension or click on this arrowhead. If you click on the arrowhead, it's going to drag the dimension. If you click on the dimension itself, the grip on that is going to move the dimension itself. So if I click on this grip, which is the blue box, it's going to move the dimension, the arrowheads, and the, and the text as well. If I click on the text grip, it's going to move only the text. Notice that my grip's right here. It actually puts a tiny little dot right there and it offsets my space. So you want to have space from every place that you dimension. Now I've got those in there, so I'm just going to highlight as I go. And this is a really good way to do things. And I've got my 0.6. Now I can put my 2.7 in with another linear dimension from point. Now I'm selecting from the top point to this point and I can drag this up and above 
It doesn't have to look exactly like your input sheet. It can, but it doesn't have to. In other words, a six does not have to be in alignment with the 2.7. If you want it to be, click on the six and grab the grip of the arrowhead and drag it up and let it snap to the other arrowhead. So either way is fine. Now I've got my 2.7 in here. Now I can dimension these holes here. I can't dimension them anywhere else. I'm dimensioning the 1.2 and the 0.25 because that is an angle and this is a profile view best showing that angle. I'm going to go ahead and make another linear dimension to the hole. Now it's very important. You could snap to the end point of this line or you could snap to the end of the center mark and I teach people by snapping to the end of the center mark because in future software you're going to have to snap to the end of the center mark and it's okay to have one two gaps but you got to have at least one now if I want to repeat the last command I just do it a linear dimension I'm going to hit enter that makes another linear dimension so now I'm going to dimension and it shows it from the left hand side you guys but remember, we're going to have a 2x on this and a 2x on this. And the 2x on the 1.95 means that the hole is the same distance from the left as it is from the right. Okay, we've got all those dimensions in. Let's highlight those off. Now, what else can we put in this view? I could put the height, but this is something that I'm going to teach you guys. You can put the height in the primary view or you can put it in the right side view. So we don't have a lot of things in the right side view. So I might put the thickness of this plate, the height of that plate, the width of this back plate, and the height of the overall part in the right side view. So I spread the dimensions around the drawing. So linear dimension from point to point. There's the thickness of that. Hit enter to repeat the last command, the thickness of the back plate. Now, if you want to bring this into the center, remember you click on it and grab the grip of the text and drag it in. And if you have enough length for a little dimension line beyond your arrowhead, you can do that. If you don't have any length of a line beyond your arrowhead, you want to leave that outside. Now I'm going to put in a dimension for the overall height, overall height right here. And I'm going to put that between the views that are the same height. So now I'm going to mark those things off. All right. Now we've got those things done. We need a diametric dimension for our holes. So I have to go to... I could go here and click and click again, or I could come over here to my toolbar and click on diameter and select the circle. Do not click on a radius. It's not going to give you the diameter symbol, and that will be incorrect. So notice that that's coming out 0.63. It's rounding up, you guys, and, and we'll change the precision and the quantity in a second. So now I've got this dimension right here. And I'm, I've got the slot to dimension, the radius to dimension, and the overall depth, and the width of this part. So I could put the width of the part in the front view, the primary view, or I could put it in the top view, but it wants to be in between the views. So let's go ahead and put it from this side. Now, I want to show you that I have a gap right here. If I dimension from the bottom to the bottom and drag this up, it's going to cover over my gaps. My gap will be down here, so I won't see a gap there, and that's a point off for each one. So I want to dimension to the point closest to where I'm going to set the dimension down on the drawing, and I'm going to drag this up here somewhere. All right, so I've got my six in there. Now my three dimension, I could put it in the right hand view or I could put it in the top view and it's up to you guys. 
I'm going to put it in this right hand view. Now, this is not incorrect for extension lines. These, ex this line and this line extend the dimension away from the part. We cannot cross the dimension lines that surround the dimension and have the arrowheads on them. That's a big no-no. So we can always cross this. We don't have to break these lines, but we cannot cross the lines that come off the arrowheads. Now I could line these up. And how do I do that? I could drag by the arrowhead and I could object snap track and line that up if I want to. I can line this one up if I want to. And line that up with that closest one down here. Or I could line this up with this second line right here. And that just gives me more space. Okay, the main thing about spacing is you don't want dimensions touching and you don't want them crowding our geometry. Now, 0.4 is a minimum amount of distance from the dimension away from the part. The text, in other words, where you set it down. So you want to give yourself plenty of space. So I have my three dimension in here. Now all I have to do is dimension my radii and my slots. So I'm going to use a radius dimension. I'm going to click on this and highlight over here. You see that's a radius. Click on that. And I'm going to select on one of the arcs and notice that it puts an R in front of that for us. And it's not the right precision. It's not the right quantity. But I've got that in there. And I'm going to hit enter to repeat the last command. And here is my radius. Now, this is a small, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a small style. It's coming from the outside in. In other words, I don't have enough room maybe to put that on the inside, but we're going to change this to a large style. You see how over here it's coming from the inside out. I want you to follow the input sheet and I'm going to count off if you don't, because this is an exercise as to where we are saying um, we're changing our dimension style. Now I need a linear dimension to say how far these are away. So these things are 0.5 from center to center from each other. And I'm going to put that out there like that. And it's okay for our dimension lines to extend over our geometry, but our text cannot be on the body of the part. Now we're going to change some things. And right away, I see that my radius is a, is a large style. I'm sorry, a small style. It's on the outside. So I want to change it to look like the input sheet right here. That is a large style. It's large enough to come from the inside out. So if you select on that and right click, you can change your dimension style to your large style and it automatically pops it from the center out. If it didn't, if it didn't come from the center, this is telling us where we're measuring to and from and the arrowhead needs to be on the inside and notice that it, it popped over to that. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our precision of our dimensions. So how many do we have that are three places? I have the 0 0.625, 0 0.375. Do you have any more dimensions that are three or more places? These two are three places. So I just clicked on both of them together them, right click, go to precision. I can do this all at one time and go to 0, 0.000. That's three places. And notice how now they're not rounded off. So I've got my precision changed. But how many radii do I have? I have one, two in one slot, three, four overall. And that's where our input sheet is wrong. So this is 4x. So if you double click on this, it allows you to edit the dimension text itself. You double click on it to edit it. Right click on it to change your precision or the style. So this will be a 4x, all caps, and a space. And you can hit close text editor or hit enter. Enter gives you another line. 
If you hit escape, it wants to get out of it. Go ahead and hit the check mark. How many distances of 0.75 do we have? We have two slots that are that length. So double click the text. 2x space 0.75. How many fillets do I have at a radius of 0.75? I have two of them. So I'm going to go to the home tab and put a 2x space 0.75. Now what else do I need to replicate? These, this hole, I have two holes and I have two hole locations. So I'm going to have to change the quantities on these. Hit the home button on your keyboard. It's up by your delete button. That goes to the front of the text, 2x space. And if you just click out in space, it accepts it. How many holes do I have? Home button, 2x space. Click out in space or click your closed editor tab. And then we have two that are located 1.25 from the top of our plate. Home to X space. Now the other things that we have for quantities are this right here. This angle is replicated on the other side and not dimensioned. So I'm going to put a 2X in front of these two. Home to X space. Home to X space. And in the future, I might just mark up these input sheets so that we can follow that. And then we'll talk about that. So now, do I have all my dimensions? Count all the dimensions on your input sheet. Make sure you have that many dimensions on your output sheet. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So I've got the number of dimensions. Now you have to make sure that your quantities are correct. I have four of these, two of these, two of these, two locations for my hole in the X and Y, two of my holes, two locations for the angle in the X and Y. And all the rest are single dimensions. Go all the way around your drawing. And if you want to turn your miter box layer off, sometimes that you see how it's locked. We want to leave that locked, but turn the light bulb off and you can see your spaces better. Make sure you have a space from everything that's linear all the way around here and here and here. And I hate to count off on people's good geometry when they just miss spaces and the rest of the drawing is 100% right. You can turn your miter box back on if you want to and leave it on because if you look at the layer properties, the miter box is set to never print. So we never have to worry about that. This text in model space will never print and our viewport in our paper space will never print. Now I'm finished dimensioning this drawing. I'm finished with the entire drawing itself. So I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go to layout. And this is where I want to print. I don't want to print. If I go print in model space, I won't have my border, my title block and everything. So I'm going to go to layout. Now what I showed you guys is how to set up your um, your page setup manager kind of tells the plotter how what your ex expectations are. So that's in our output tab. In the output tab, you see the page setup manager. And notice that it's selecting layout. So if I modify that and look at its setup, we want monochrome, black and white um, in the real world, you could have this colored, but in this class, they're suggesting that you use monochrome. Now, this is a color table. .ctb is a color table. If you used an AutoCAD color table, it would be any color that you've selected. But when you get into civil drawings, you will use a civil color table because the colors are very specific because the line weights plot 
at certain colors. So you don't set up line weights, you just set your colors in civil drawings. Now, in our, we are not going to print to an AutoCAD PDF. We're going to print to a Microsoft print to PDF. It's going to be letter size. We're going to plot the entire layout. And that is set by our orange box around our drawing. Don't worry about the scale because that is set by your layout. This will be landscape. And leave all this alone. And just make sure this is monochrome. So the only thing that I had to set was print to PDF right here and say, okay. Now that just sets up my drawing and I'm going to close that. If you want to plot, you can either plot or print or batch plot. And I want to show you the difference. The batch plot is going to bring up your model space. So you don't want to print your model space. You, you take that away, remove that sheet. You only, want to, you only want to print your bracket. You want to take off publish in background. You do not want that happening. You do want to open in viewer when done so that you can see it. And you can, you can actually, once you've set that up, we're going to say publish to a PDF. And that would be a Microsoft PDF. So what happened to all my settings that I just put in. Well, those come up in plot, not batch plot. So we're going to go to plot. Batch plot allows me to print plot multiple layout tabs. All right. So what I'm going to do right here is you see that this is already set up to Microsoft print to PDF, monochrome. All this is set. So when I went to my page setup manager, it, it affected plot not batch plot and i always want to hit preview that's what it's going to look like now look at my visible lines are heavier than center lines and hidden lines and that's the way we set it up so it's printing with line weight on i'm going to get out of this and down here on your lower con console, if I show my line weight, that's what it looks like when we print because we said to print with line weight. Now, I don't like drawing in this, and, and honestly, guys, you ne I've never printed with line weight in any industry. We always just use default because it just looks like Crayola. It gets too heavy, but we are going to plot and once again, it says right here, plot object line weights. So we're going to allow that and say, okay. And it's trying to create a PDF. So I'm going to name this the same thing. And let me get out of that. I'm going to say plot. And you always want to preview. You want to preview to see if all your layers are turned on, that you're all your everything is filled in in your title block you want to make sure that everything is showing correctly and notice that we don't see a miter line and all that text that was set not to plot so if i go ahead and i can hit the x to get out of that or i can hit plot or print and it's creating that for me now where you're going to put that is on your google drive file stream at the same place as you're drawing and it may pop over to that so I'm going to name this bracket the same name as I use for my drawing. So I have a bracket.dwg for AutoCAD drawing and a bracket.pdf for my printed drawing. Now let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to go to 1405 and I should have a bracket. It didn't go in there. There's my bracket right here. And it comes up looking like this. And this is what Microsoft uh, Adobe does for me. If you go to view and rotate the view, you can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. Then you can see your drawing. So I'm going to zoom out here and I can see what my drawing looks like. It looks a little funky when I zoom out like these are wider. 
but if you zoom in, it's not. This will be your final drawing that you're going to turn in for submission. Now, you don't want to do this before you make an appointment with me because I want to review your work to make sure your work is good. Make sure that you have breaks in your center lines, your axial center lines, that you've changed your line type scale for just those center lines that did not have a break in that. 